Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Multi-Brand Solutions for Enterprise Brands with Escalade Sports. My name is Betsy Petrovic. I'm the Marketing Manager here at CQL, and I'll be your host and moderator for today's discussion. We have a really great group of panelists today coming from Escalade Sports, CQL, and Shopify, and they look forward to sharing with you their hands-on experience of migrating and supporting 11 websites on Shopify Plus. So during today's webinar, if I invite you to submit any questions you have through our Q&A at the bottom, and our panelists will be happy to answer them in the last 10 to 15 minutes of our discussion. Lastly, we are giving away an Escalade Sports Portable Foaling Set. This is actually a fun uh, mashup game between football and bowling, and it's Escalade's 11th brand on Shopify Plus that just recently launched. So we'll be doing our drawing just before we begin our Q&A. All right, so let's get started. So less than two years ago, back in 2020, Escalade Sports was faced with a big question. How do we maintain, manage, and go to market with dozens of brands on legacy custom tools? Fast forward to today, Shopify Plus has unified 11 Escalade brands under one framework, allowing for scalability, unique brand design, site customizations, and marketing ownership of content for the future business growth. With the first brand launch of Onyx alone, Escalade Sports saw the promise within Shopify Plus. They had 139% sales growth and their conversions tripled. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to our four panelists for today's discussion. I'll have them turn on their cameras here as I introduce them. So first I have Emily Patton. Emily serves as the e-commerce manager for Escalade Sports, a sporting goods manufacturer and parent company to over 50 brands. Emily oversees all of the e-commerce and digital marketing for Escalade sporting brands. Emily was also recently promoted this past week, so congratulations to her. Before her six years at Escalade Sports, Emily worked in journalism for both magazines and newspapers. She has an MBA from the University of Southern Indiana and a bachelor's degree in news editorial journalism from Western Kentucky University. She is an avid volunteer with Big Brothers Big Sisters and with National English Setter Rescues, and in her free time, the proud manager of her dog's Instagram account. Next on our list, we have Ryan Donahue. Uh, many of you have met Ryan in the past. Ryan is our client success manager here at CQL, where he leads our team of industry professionals in the design, development, and implementation of world-class e-commerce solutions. Ryan has spent the last six years working on e-commerce sites from our replatforms to custom integrations, to marketing and growth, leveraging our industry leading platforms from Salesforce, Shopify, Magento, Work Area, and many more. His clients have, are, are massive. He's got Elf Cosmetics, PetSmart, Escalade Sports, StrideRight, Polish Choice, and many more. So before CQL, Ryan also came from an e-commerce manager background, and that background really helps him to understand the client challenges and find robust manageable solutions for our clients. He also lives in Michigan uh, where his wife and three children reside and at times we get the pleasure of meeting them on our Zoom calls. And then lastly from Shopify, we have Keaton Ross and Anthony Gavaya. So Keaton is the Merchant Success Manager at Shopify with over eight years of sales and account management experience across various industries. Keaton worked on the Escalade Sports account until Escalade, Escalade outgrew their current tier and Keaton holds an MBA from Ivy Business School and resides in London, Ontario. And he was, when he's not working, you'll find him fishing off the dock at his cottage. And then lastly, Anthony is our Merchant Success Manager at Shopify and Escalade Sports Current Success Manager. While beginning his uh, career in education, Anthony was able to transfer his skills and research to the tech world. Working in customer merchant success for over four years, Anthony prides himself on his strategic and personable relationship building. Anthony is extremely motivated to work and watch his merchants achieve their goals no matter how large. And then when Anthony is not driving merchant success, he's at home with his wife, daughter, and dog tour in Paris, Ontario. So welcome panelists and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna ask my panelists to unmute. There we go. <laughs> Do we have to talk now? You get to talk now. All right. 
All right, so we're going to have Emily just kick us off. Um, I know I gave a, a brief slide on, I'm going to actually stop sharing my screen here so you can see everybody. Um, Emily, can you just give us a little background about Escalade Sports and some of the brands that you work with? Sure, yes. Yeah. So I'm Emily. Um, I'm the brand marketing manager for Escalade Sports. And Escalade Sports is the parent company to about 50 different brands. So the 50 different brands come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, I am over our basketball, pickleball, and playground division. So some of those brands you may have heard of are like Gorilla Basketball, Wood Play Play Sets, Goal Setter Basketball, or Onyx Pickleball, just to name a few. Uh, but Escalade is headquartered in Evansville, Indiana. Um, and yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful company. Awesome. All right. So for the, the people that are uh, attending today, can you, and uh, I think Brian, this would be a great one for you, both you and Emily. When Escalade Sports kind of came to us back in 2020, can you just paint the picture of where things were at? How, you know, we talked about you guys had multiple legacy platforms. What did things look like? And, and what was your vision of, of where you wanted to take it? Uh, you Brian, want me you to start? Want to take us off? You want me to start? Sure. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. I can start on that one. So, um, yeah, originally, um, you know, there were a couple brands that were the the focus of of things, which Onyx being being kind of the first to kind of make the move. But the state of the sites was was varying. Some of them didn't have any DTC play at all. Um, there were a couple that were on Magento. One was, I think, coming off a failed Magento build, and actually, that so they they had a presence and had. I don't know, six month window maybe that they had zero traffic. The site was completely down coming off of that failed build. And then they had a few that were living on completely custom homegrown type solutions. And um, there were a lot of pain points in, in that um, when you kind of get into the custom space and you keep adding custom, custom, custom. Um, I know Emily specifically, we, we've talked many a time about how it's just difficult for you as marketers to manage the day to day for the, the DTC sites that you did have in place. To, to drive business, to get your marketing up and running and, and, and feeling like you always had to go to an actual developer to make simple changes, whether that was copy or images or, you know, get landing pages ready for an upcoming campaign. And so um, really at the start, it was like, hey, how do we, how do we get this site into our custom framework? How do we, you know, start growing, growing this pickleball business? And as the more that, you know, we got to partner with Escalade Sports and really look under the hood, we, we kind of put the brakes on things. And instead of going down that path, we said, why don't we look at platform? Why don't we look at taking a multi-site approach and building a framework and structure that can be repeatable for all of your brands and, and help look, let's look at the five-year roadmap, not just the, the problem of getting Onyx ready for Black Friday. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. So we were looking for something that was user friendly. Like Ryan mentioned, we were struggling to even put up banners or swap out text on our sites. Um, I remember one instance where a web developer had to pull the code in a rich text file for me, and I had to make the product copy changes in the code and then send it back to him. It just wasn't feasible, uh, wasn't possible to digital market that way. Um, so we began replatforming our 11 sites with Onyx. And I think we started in late September, 2020, which is a site walkthrough and design workshop with CQL. And we were able to go launch that site uh, within two months, just before Black Friday, which was awesome timing. Awesome. So uh, a question then, Emily, when you guys came to CQL, was, was Shopify Plus the original solution of choice or were you looking at, uh, you know, I think some of us, we've come from backgrounds where everything's custom. So we come and say, oh, I think we should just customize something custom for all of our customizations. Um, did, you, did you start with Shopify or how did you get to that solution? Yeah, I think like Ryan said, there was a lot of discussion about if we could keep building something custom or um, if we needed to go uh, a different platform. And so Shopify was the choice that came to mind because we were looking for something super reliable, fast, responsive, and something that was user friendly so that we as digital marketing coordinators could take it over from our IT and web development teams and just bring it in house. Um, and we also had something called the AS400, which manages all of our pricing and inventory. And CQL was going to handle the setup for us in Shopify. So it was a, a no-brainer to move forward then. 
Excellent. So Anthony and Keaton, is that is that typically what you guys see when clients are coming to Shopify? They're they've they're struggling with these kind of, I guess, dev backlogs. And I think that's kind of what I hear a lot about, at least on the marketing side of using Shopify. People just they want their marketing teams to be able to control the website. They haven't been able to do it. So I think there's almost a surprise of the the abilities that they get from Shopify. Yeah, we we see that all the time. That's that's really our bread and butter. The thing that I would mention too is you, you're able to train your staff one time and it applies to, in this case, all 11 stores. Um, basically, it's it's a very liberating feeling to not have to work through um, code to make changes to your site. So we, yeah, that's the, the number one thing that that I notice, especially in instances of, of brands bringing over multiple stores is being able to make those changes very, very, very fast and, and efficiently. So yeah, I would agree. It, it's a good... Um... It's a good question, and, and Keaton and I were actually just sat at a uh, amazing merchant panel. We're in hotel rooms right now, so uh, we are away. Um, but we just sat through this merchant panel, and one of the brands up at the panel said it was, as Keaton said, really liberating to to jump to Shopify because prior, she explained it that she was working for the technology, like that was like a, a really big task for her. She said when we made the switch the technology started working for us and i thought that was a really cool uh way to put it and i i didn't think i'd say it in this uh panel but it really it, it's really relevant it's uh it's just like that that one time as keaton mentioned training the one time you know learning curve and then and then that's it it's really just meant to work for you not not against you excellent all right, so a, a kind of an interesting question, um, Emily. You kind of touched on this as as far as kind of the process once you started with CQL, and you know we do wireframes and site maps and you know your roadmap. I noticed that you know I, I've had the benefit of being able to write up some of these cool Escalade case studies. Um, so one thing I noticed was there were there were four brands: uh, Lifeline Fitness, Goal Setter, uh, Rave Sports, and I believe that the main Escalade brand. They each um, had a, something we call a brand refresh. Um, I'd have like Ryan to talk just to share a little bit about what a brand refresh is. And then Emily, if you can talk about why those brands were considered for that um, as part of the, the implementation process. Sure. And so brand refresh and, and why we didn't do every single brand that way is, um, I, I guess, a very common thing that we will run into in the industry. It's, and Escalate is a perfect example of this is that Escalate historically focused on B2B and, and wholesale. So large contracts with like a Dick Sporting Goods or, some, or you know, large merchant in the space and they're selling in, in retail. And so they may, own, they may have a lot of print materials, um, packaging and inserts and other types of things. They may have, um, you know, a logo, obviously. Um, but beyond that, they, they may not even have an official brand style guide. And so when you go D2C, um, you've got your own e-com site. Um, establishing those, those styles is extremely important because it informs everything from your homepage, header, footer elements to also the email marketing campaigns, your landing pages, even tie, bleeds into your social media and all the omnichannel marketing and selling that's going to happen um, at all those customer touch points. And so um, we have a process that we take uh, clients through. It doesn't have to be a part of a, a build, but oftentimes we'll be tacked on during our initial phase of discovery and workshops. Uh, just to work through brand boards is what we call them. So oftentimes you'll get a couple different directions, but Lifeline Fitness, for example, we had a logo. I don't even know if we had a vector file for it. It was just like, hey, here's, here's a logo. Our colors are black, red, and white and uh, go from there. And so it, it's really a time to get um, the client, so get Escalade Sports excited about what this can be and look like. And so we may show it in a lot of different ways. So we may show show it as a PPC ad. We may show like what a, a, a hero image could look like on the website or a, a snippet of a, a PDP element. So getting, it's just a way to get the right look and feel for the brand and getting buy-in. It also gets clients really excited about what the site could be and how they're going to go to market. And so it's, it's not meant to be, hey, here's your final homepage or website. It's, it's very much aligning to like, what do you want this brand to be? How do you want to go to market? what is the right look and feel and tone of your brand and the things that you're going to put out there at those different touch points. And so it's just a really, really fun time and to, to go through that initial exercise. And at the end of it, what we end up having is a really nice flushed out style guide and some brand boards of like what this should look and feel like. And that can be leveraged by 
uh, the Lifeline Fitness, in this case, team, as well as the CQL team or any other agency partners that they may have that are doing marketing, site design, um, it, it, anything like that. And uh, um, a lot of times there's, there's inputs from those other teams. Like I mentioned, if you already have some established, if you're a little more established and you have teams that are running point on maybe your print or your, your, your B2B side, they can come in and have input too, so that you've got a holistic um, look and feel for your brand at, at all touch points. Yeah, and right. the, those brands were all chosen just because they were really due, like Ryan said, for a brand refresh already. And the need for a new site spearheaded uh, the start of that. Um, we were looking for something just to be current and consumer facing. Um, and then CQL really helped us with the website organization and thinking through UX and UI design, which is something we didn't have a lot of experience with um, in our backgrounds. And we do have an internal design team, but they're managing multiple brands, just like our digital marketing coordinators are. And we really needed to take that load off of them and lean on to CQL for the help. Um, and it was really just a seamless process from start to finish, like even thinking through, you know, language on our website and what our categories were going to be called um, to how the site was going to function. Uh, but it was great to work with CQL and really collaborate there. Right. That was great forward thinking as, you know, planning out, especially for your marketing as once the site's launched, there's still a lot of pieces that need to be done. So I can see definitely the strong value in that. Let's see, I was just going to add, so Emily added like creative direction in house as well Is that like, sometimes it's a scary thing, especially for someone like, so Julie at Escalade Sports running a lot of the creative direction for all of their different brands. And I, I hope Julie would, 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 uh, feel the same way that we're highly collaborative and she was able to give input and it's certainly not, we're not working in a silo. It's, it can be very, very collaborative if, if the, you know, you're, client team and, and the vision and creative director is in place to work with you know our designers and stuff to make that happen so i think it's we've got a really nice refined process and um it can seem scary giving up some of that creative control but we find that it really comes together nicely when the teams work together yeah absolutely and i'm positive julie would say that it was fantastic working with you guys excellent Right. All right. So this one's my favorite question. Um, so, you know, you've got 11 brands. This is, is some people do the multi-brands. Some people just do one at a time. But I think as I look at your timeline, it's astounding to see 11 brands in, in less than a year. Um, I can't imagine what that was like for your team, uh, let alone um, CQL since I wasn't here at the time. But I'm just kind of curious, can you talk, Emily, about the efficiencies of that once you kind of got kicked off and started and, you know, kind of the learning progress for your team? Like, how, how did it become easier? What things, you know, just, I guess, got better? What things did you wish maybe that you had thought of that you hadn't? Um, just what did, what did you think as you continued to progress with some of these brands? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I came in with zero Shopify experience myself. And Ryan, I don't know if you remember this, but you were with me on the very first day of training and I was super overwhelmed. Uh, I think you look at you're starting with one and you have 11 to go and how daunting that feels. Um, but Ryan took me through really slowly and started me with like learning how to publish products and set up collections and filters and then just starting that foundation of knowledge. And then from there, the CQL team would take me through each component and train me on how to populate content or the functionality of each. And really what we were trying to do with starting with one with Onyx is um, set up a template that we could kind of replicate and duplicate for the rest of the site. So really what happened is we learned one site and then the second and third site, we were able to rinse and repeat that same knowledge and training that we received, say from Ryan, that first day and just carry it through. So by the 10th, 11th site, it was, we were very self-sufficient um, and just could execute. Um, but we worked with CQL so much that really they started to become um, an extension of our internal team. Um, so it just felt like you guys were co-workers uh, during those first uh, site builds. And then we became really independent moving forward, which allowed us to save time and money. 
So I guess, uh, Anthony and Keaton, do you guys see um, similarities? I, I think, you know, Escalade is, is one of several that we have from a multi-brand um, perspective. Is, is, do you see kind of the same efficiencies and synergies across some of your other clients? I'm doing the exact same thing right now with a, uh, a music brand. Um, it's going to be about 10 stores when we're finished. They started with one of their uh, lower volume stores to kind of test the waters. Um, a lot of tentativeness there, very nervous about uh, moving, I, I believe coming from WooCommerce. Um, so there's a lot of question marks about the transition, about the apps we were using to transfer data over. Uh, I suggest we use a test site to you know, try it out and get some confidence there. Uh, it worked fine. And then overnight, it seemed he was just addicted to moving his stores over. So it, it felt like in a couple of days, we had 10 stores on Shopify. Um, and he's in the process of moving over his his flagship store right now, and that's so that's something in the last two weeks even that I can I can relate to, but uh, I've I've done this many times. It's <laughs> it's what we do best. Shopify is uh, really good at going from <clears throat> from zero to one hundred essentially, like going from nothing to having a fully functional store is is really our bread and butter. So just out of curiosity, and again, I'm going to say this from a marketing perspective, um, if I wanted to, as just, you know, someone on the e-commerce team or Emily, say, say you have a 12th brand that comes in, what, what is that typical process now? I mean, are you copying your, your Shopify theme? Are you picking and choosing different things? Like, how do you go about adding another brand onto this, onto this pattern? Like, and maybe Ryan, this would be a good process question for you. Um, just like what, what would happen next if I say, okay, we're going to add a 12th Escalade brand shorten that timeline for me, what would happen? Um, well, foaling was probably a good example of, of that um, specifically. I mean, there's different levels, I think, like we talked about the branding exercise, right? So if, if, if that new brand, let's say it was an acquisition and you need a refresh, or maybe it's a completely just a startup brand new division that you want to just try out and it's brand new, like it may need that branding. And so that adds to your timeline, right? To work through that, but um, foaling, which was the 11th, that was the lightest one that we, that we did. And that was mostly, um, I mean, Emily, you, you can speak to it, but I feel like your team did most of the work. Like um, yeah. if we, we effectively helped establish like getting the theme and, and the repo set up for, for our devs in case we needed to make some, some tweaks. Um, we did pull over a custom, a couple, um, couple sections um, from other brands and move those over so that the polling team could leverage those. Um, but it was very light once we kind of got those sections in play for them and added those to their theme. Um, they were able to kind of run with run with the work for the most part. So they were they were managing the creative and the content load, the products. Um, we were kind of there as a guide on the side more than anything on that on that particular brand. Emily, I don't know if you have other thoughts on on the polling experience. Yeah, exactly. I, I think we became really independent aware because we had laid the foundation with the other sites and had the knowledge and the training of what each component does. And we were able to basically pick and choose components we wanted as we went on new sites. Um, it was really simple. We just ran with the creative um, and plugged in uh, the content and had, a, had another 11th site ready to go. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's I think that's part of you know where, where I'm coming from. My background also with e-commerce manager at, at Lobstergram and collections, et cetera, and, and hearing time frames of usually 12 months. Um, that's on a good note, very expensive. And then hearing, you know, that that marketing can become independent with stuff. It, it's just, it was hard to envision. Um, so I mean, hearing these, I, I I'm curious, just like everyone else, is like, is this really possible um, to be able to do that? Keaton, Anthony, you guys have anything to add? I see Anthony's nodding there. Yeah, I agree. I, I've got, you know, similar experiences to Keaton where I'm currently working with a brand um, and they work with a lot of YouTubers, uh, influencers, artists. And um, it it is that easy. Just, um, you know, once once you're in as Emily somewhat established, you know, the first the first store setup might be a bit daunting. But as you start to add more and see the ease, ease of use of it all, um, we're, we're doing it. Like earlier this week, it was like, "Hey, we we need to add another shop. This influencer, we we want to we want to get something done for them and, and manage their location and manage their shop." And it, it was truly just super super simple uh, to the point now where like 
they already know what to ask or, you know, we're going to need this, we're going to need this turned on. And it's really just like a quick spin up, which is, which is really cool. So um, it, it really is a, a pretty seamless uh, experience. And it, if it's not, um, we've got an incredible team here. So, you know, whether it's resources, whether it's, you know, we consult with you, we walk you through, you know, what the recommendations are based on other brands that we're working with in the same space. Um, the, there really is like a, a nice partnership, which is fantastic. That's a great lead in um, to, I guess, the next question from, from a development perspective, um, Emily, just after the fact, can you describe what did you do like after the launch from a post support um, agreement, whether it's with CQL or with Shopify, like what did you guys need to continue to support you and, and really going forward now too from, you know, is, is it just development? Is it marketing op optimization? What do you guys feel you need help with and, and what have you guys looked for? Right, so we still have an ongoing support contract with CQL as, as things come up, uh, whether it's a bug fix or um, a new implementation that we want to bring in. Uh, we just had a situation come up with one of our brands, Rave Water Sports, where uh, we wanted to play around and see um, how back in stock notifications work for us. So say when an item is out of stock, a consumer logs on, they input their email address to be notified when and it comes back and they, and they can buy it really quickly. Um, so we tested that out with Rave. We had CQL, you know, plug in um, this app for Shopify. And then we had a lot of success with it for Rave. So then we leaned on CQL to put it across the rest of our domains. Um, so that's just an example of some support that we would need from CQL, just um, continually innovating um, and adding to the sites as we go. Brian, anything you wanted to add to that? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess as like an ongoing, right? Like Emily, we've worked through like roadmap planning. So there's there's always the day-to-day -day and the bugs, keeping the lights on things, but just looking ahead to say like, how can we more you know, more effective in, in our customer service, managing of tickets across multi-brand, multi-site? Like we start looking at, at Gorgeous potentially, or like looking at like, how do we best um, improve those types of things? Um, there's also, you know, on the marketing front, just working through like, how are we going to grow these platforms? And so, um, with them having so many different brands and this gets into some, like how, how is your organization structured, but you know, there's different budgets per brand, right? Like Foling is just getting off the ground and running and like, they may need to be okay with, with what's happening. But if you look at like an Onyx or Escalade sports where they're having growth, they may, they may want to invest in some new, like. Um, we have a, like a pallet, uh, a paddle finder on Onyx. So, so that's an investment that is somewhat more unique for, for their products and finding the right solution. Am I an advanced pickle player? Am I just getting started? And if I am getting started, there might be five different paddles to choose from to get me in the right, the right paddle. And so um, the Onyx brand can kind of make an investment to have that kind of quiz builder, find your product type solution. Um, and then the sort of the benefits of building this in a, a multi-site fashion is that and we kind of call it the 80-20 rule is that um, the Onyx brand may fund 100% of it, right? And all the work and do the initial designs and everything. And together, we're going to bring that to life on the site. Um, but for the other brands, they get the benefit of all of that work that they did. So if we want to put that on Escalade Sports, we want to put that, make it a, you know, bring it to Lifeline Fitness, finding the right workout equipment for me the 20 the 80 percent has been done for the most part we can move that over to that to that site and we're tweaking it to fit the brand we're going to tweak tweak the the questions and, and the output of those product recommendations and that's that 20 percent. and so um not to the downplay the you know we kept saying simple 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 and we just talked about like what is it like to add a brand like there's a lot of upfront work right that happened on the first you know, let's say five to six, seven sites before they got to that 11th where they were able to do it as, as easily as they were. Um, and so I think that um, if you do that initial planning up front on those initial sites, it just makes it a lot easier for your future brands to get up and running. And there's a lot of great things that can, can be shared there. So I'm kind of going back to the, I'm segueing back to a question that you previously asked, but no, it's um, great. But just all, all closely tied together with, with that, that, that framework and then all leveraging a very similar code base. There's a lot of efficiency gains uh, when, we, when we look at new features and trying to add new nuances to make each site feel unique, even though for the most part under the hood, they're like 90% the same exact same code base and have the same features. 
So I guess, uh, Keaton, this is a question for you and, and Anthony too, if you wanna chime in. So looking at some of the brands that you guys work with, do you typically find that they have that most of your clients have some kind of a support agreement with an agency? Do they use is Shopify available for you know support to, to kind of help? Or what do what do most clients tend to, to do once they've signed with Shopify and want kind of ongoing support? It's a good question. Um, for some some backstory and some context. So having been the the, the previous MSM with Escalate Sports, um, at Shopify, we try our best to match MSMs and, and our books of business to look similar. I work with a lot of smaller merchants, a lot of founders, um, and Escalade Sports is a much larger company than, than my book of business, and hence why we transitioned to Anthony, who works with much larger companies. So um, in my book of business, it will look a lot different than his. I would say in my book, I, I, I have a pretty even split. Um, I highly recommend working with partners. Um, funnily enough, Ryan does a lot of, uh, heavy lifting in regards to what an MSM would do for Shopify as well. So a lot of the things and a lot of like the tutorials, the, Hey, how do I even add a product? What's a collection stuff like that? I am still doing with some of my, um, smaller merchants as well. But, uh, at the end of the day, I do recommend if you're looking to grow, if you're trajectory, if you, if you want a hockey stick, you need that support. Um, I'm very passionate about um, our ecosystem of partners, agency partners, we have the largest, we have the largest ecosystem of app partners. Um, I'm, I'm all for our merchants working with our agencies because ultimately, um, at the end of the day, you're experts. Um, I, I, I do my best to be an expert, but at the end of the day, you are an expert. So, um, yeah, Anthony, is that the similar, uh, similar for you then? Yeah, it really is with, with that regard of support. We've got a, I just feel like I'm like <laughs> repeating everything Keaton says in like a, a different way, but it is true. I mean, it, it, it's a hundred percent the truth. Like the partners that we do have are, uh, are, are incredible and they, they really help out quite a bit. They work with the merchants and so it's, what's really amazing is they work with us as well a lot of the times so that, you know, the brands that we're working with ourselves at Shopify and the partner, we all are in sync and we know what's going on and we can, you know, make the best recommendations and, and push that needle forward. So it really is, um, yeah, exactly what Keaton says. As far as a 50-50 split, um, for mine, I'd say it's a little bit higher just because of the uh, types of brands I'm working with, um, larger teams, you know, it's, it's essentially instead of moving like a, a little sailboat sometimes it's it's moving these big ships so there's a lot more um, partnership and, and support involved but uh yeah great so uh, talking about development customizations um emily i know i know you mentioned the, the as 400 and that's uh near and dear to my heart we had an as 400 when i was at collections and um it was highly highly customized so um, one of the things we were told, this was years ago, is that it was so customized it couldn't integrate with any platform. Um, so we were forced to have a, a custom um, platform in order to work with our, our custom AS400. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, looking at the, the customizations you had? Um, clearly you stayed on the AS400. Maybe Ryan, if you, if you want to, to help with this one, um, talk about the customizations. I know a lot of clients come to us with, with things like an AS400, something that might be customized, something might be more unique to them and, and how we address those, those customizations. Emily, you wanna talk about that first, just on what you needed and, okay. Sure, uh, yeah, the AS400 is a, a, a really archaic system, <laughs> I guess would be the best way to put it. Um, and we needed something to integrate with it. Um, I know that that was a challenge for us trying to find what was best from there. Um, and we were really challenged CQL and said, hey, can you help us with this? Um, and yeah, Ryan, you wanna take it from there? Sure, um, I believe it was best said or, or was stated early on is that the one thing that cannot change, it has to stay in play. Um, and so kind of the, the solution that, that, was, that was came up with is, is, a, is a middleware. So it is, it is a custom, um, Solution that, that we did build out, we call it a middle, middleware, but essentially allowing us to connect the AS400 using APIs directly to Shopify. 
Um, so uh, when we when we met Escalade, they had Salsify as their PIM already in place. And for them, not all of the brands, but you had a good amount of brands already established, right, Emily, at the time, um, already there. And so what we did was we leveraged the Salsify pre-built connector. Um, and so a lot of the product data, uh, most all of the product data is coming from the PIM itself. But inventory and pricing sheets were required to come from the AS400. So there's some business logic baked into the middleware. And also the, the benefit of having that middleware approach is the AS400 does want to decouple at some point. We can still keep that middleware piece that handles some business logic and already has connections made to Shopify. And we only have to connect it to whatever replaces that AS400. But for now, um, the AS400 is still in place on the Shopify API. So the pricing and inventory feeds um, come over from there. And then from a fulfillment standpoint, it also needs to know about orders. So um, the middleware takes all orders um, from Shopify and pushes them downstream into the AS400. And as operationally, they can handle their multi-warehouse, all that stuff downstream. And any of this order statuses, fulfillment statuses come back. And then we're leveraging Shopify and Klaviyo from a communication to the client standpoint. So um, so yeah, those are, that's kind of how that played out. And now Shopify APIs were robust enough to pull off everything that we needed to do and allow Escalade to keep the AS400 in play because uh, the business essentially is 100% dependent on it to, to function. Um, so yeah, it's probably, probably a deep enough explanation, I think. So Ryan, if, if Escalade wanted to change that, I know you mentioned feeds as part of that, say they want it to be real-time inventory checks or um, uh, you mentioned um, just from, a, from an integration perspective, where does that take place, I guess, in that sales process? Did you look at all the fields and all the data that was going to be passed kind of as you were um, pricing out the solution and designing the solution? Um, where did that kind of fall into when you were developing the ecosystem um, before you started development? Like where did, where was that AS400 technology yeah, it, structure? I guess it all happens, all that handle happens in the early stages. So I sort of mentioned this before with like the branding path, if you will, there's a, a parallel path and then upfront planning, call it discovery, call it planning or whatever you want to call it. But um, there's, a, there's a couple of weeks there where our teams are in the room, are in the room for, I don't know, four to eight hours a week. And we're spending a bunch of time together working through all of that in particular for more complex builds. You know, we talk about, you know, Onyx happened to be a, a two month, but you know, there can be four to six month builds on Shopify, depending on number of brands and the complexity and custom integrations that are needed um, leveraging APIs. So um, in that initial phase, we're, we're working through that and talking through those requirements. So we worked with uh, head of IT, Tony over at Escalade and got an understanding of what it does today and what it needs to do. And there's a lot of different stakeholders when you're dealing with something like um, an AS400 that you need to connect to custom. So it's just flushing out like what, what does it need to do? What does it do today? What things can be pulled into something like a Shopify to manage moving forward versus have to be managed um, in AS400. And from there, you just, as you start, def that creates definition. And from there, we're able to determine what, you know, where things need to come from. So through that process, we were able to work through that. Most everything can continue to be in their PIM and, and come from there from a product data standpoint, but that in order to keep inventory up to date with the way that inventory is managed for, I mentioned exporting goods and such before. So the way that their inventory is shared um, in all their warehousing, that the inventory really needed to come from the AS400. So we were able to make that connection and then pricing changes as well, because it, it relates to finance and, and some other things from a business standpoint, um, that that needed to be the, the system of record for pricing as well. So we did that. So it all it all really comes in those, those initial planning. I'd say technical workshops vary from, you know, I don't know, four to 20 hours of meetings, depending on level of complexity. But I would say in this case, I think it was, you know, a few, a few two hour sessions to kind of flush out uh, the details with the Escalade team and, and could start defining, you know, what APIs we needed and how we needed it to work. Excellent. Sounds like long days of meetings, but definitely worthwhile. <laughs> uh, try not to put them all on the same day, right? You just meet like, you know, yeah. 
So I'm going to shift uh, a little bit here. So we've talked a lot about, you know, orders and inventory management. So I noticed, Emily, as I was writing up a couple of these, you've got a couple brands like Woodplay, um, that's more the higher end swing sets, you can't order those online, um, and American Heritage Billiards. Those really look like they're more Legion types uh, sites than e-commerce sites. Can you talk about a little bit about um, how you've used Shopify Plus for those, the differences and kind of how you manage the sites? Because um, it's, it's such a big extreme right doing lead gen versus doing you know the e-commerce sides right so with a mix of sites we have a, a mix of both so some sites like with play places while you can order them online um, most consumers with a purchase that big um, it's more lead generation focus for the local dealer network that we have spread around the country um, so our online site is more as a digital catalog or resource for them to say, get installation advice or browse what they're looking, what they want to go to the dealer for uh, first to kind of have an idea. So then they'll use uh, the dealer network um, and find a dealer online, um, type in their zip code and then request a sales quote. Um, and we also, did um, dealer landing pages where um, say you're searching for um, a place at near you, a local search, um, those would help our SEO um, and help our dealers get more leads as well. So um, we've put a lot of work into all those lead gen sites. Um, and, you know, one thing we learned is that um, customers are leaning into e-commerce either way, whether they want to um, shop from a direct to consumer website and have something shipped to their home, or they want to still um, shop at a local retailer, but say they just want um, information beforehand or maybe want to arrange an appointment or a curbside pickup. Um, but we just wanted to be able to serve our dealers and our e com consumers wherever they were at. Excellent. So in an interesting question, um, I, I know that, and this is probably best for Anthony. So Anthony, I know a lot has come out from Shopify lately on the, the B2B offering that Shopify has. So say Emily wanted to, to take on all of those B2B features, you know, the dealer portals, um, how would they go about doing that? And Ryan, you can, you can chime in here too. If, if they wanted to do kind of a full B2B suite, can you talk about a little bit about what that offers and how easy it would be to kind of add that on? Would they have to do anything massively different to their platform structure as they currently have it? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, uh, Betsy. I, I think there'd be a lot of discussion first just to make sure that it, it was the right solution. There'd be a lot of collaboration on that end. Um, as you mentioned, Ryan would be pulled in for sure, but it's it's fairly simple and straightforward. We've got some amazing teams here that if there was any more explanation needed, if there was more guidance needed for some of these solutions, um, we would you know set up those calls, just some scoping calls to make sure that once again, it's the right fit, but also how we might go about uh, adding some of those features. So it would really be a, a collaborative effort moving forward, but it is a fairly simple just you know, add and, and move forward with uh, with the features and functionality. So I, I, I hate going with like the simplistic answer all the time, but uh, everything in Shopify is, is, is fairly straightforward. So if it's a request that's made and something we want to work towards, it's really just hooking up with the, um, the, the right types of teams, making sure that the scope of this is manageable and making sure that the solution is still there. Because um, one thing that's super important to myself and Keaton as well is uh, understanding before we jump into anything. So even if um, even if Emily were to come to me with these requests, I'd still really want to know. Okay, so what are you trying to solve? Where is this coming from? And and if we get that big picture, then we can start to hand off to teams and and make sure that you know uh, you folks get the features and functionalities that you want in that that B two B selection. I, w I would add to Anthony that. Out of the box, natively, Shopify does have um, like a wholesale channel, which would just be another layer added on to the back end of your incumbent site. So no, no additional lift there. Um, you would basically have a password protected domain for B2B customers to be able to uh, shop via their own custom price list, stuff like that. We have third-party solutions. I referenced our ecosystem of apps. There are B2B wholesale solutions uh, in that 
um, world as well. And then Shopify is constantly iterating. We're releasing new B2B tools, I believe at the end of this month, maybe July, um, that are going to, again, be almost like a, a layer on top of your incumbent backend that are going to allow you to create price lists, um, tax exemptions for uh, B2B solutions, essentially for your, your corporate customers as well. So um, all that to say, Anthony's nailed it, but we do have out of the box solutions and more coming as well. It makes it really easy. Excellent. Anything you wanted to add to that, Ryan? No, I think I think they covered that. You covered it well. Okay, so based on time frame, I think we're at a good spot to um, pause our discussion. We're going to do our folding set drawing here for um, and pick one of our winners. As I told our team, unfortunately, Escalade and CQL and Shopify are not eligible. Um, so I will put up here just so you guys can take a, a quick peek. I thought this is really neat. Um, I will share my screen. Let's see, can you guys see it? As you're as you're pulling this up, Betsy, I was just gonna say, uh, any questions from the from the audience? Q and A would be send us any questions, and we can have some time to answer anything that you guys are curious to learn more about. Absolutely. I cannot see your screen, Betsy. Now. Not as of yet. No. We'll just do it the easy way. Now. At least I can't. I, I don't know. I, if, uh, no, I, I can't. Can. There we go. It's okay. Yay! Okay. All right. <laughs> One of these days we'll get it. All right, so we're gonna have Mary pick. This is uh, again, the folding uh, set. This actually just came out. This was uh, Escalade's recent uh, launch. And it is, actually is a really fun game. My, my family cheats. Uh, we put the boards much closer together because it's a lot harder than it looks. Um, and our winner for today is, Aisha, is it Aisha Hassan? Um, she is our winner. I'm going to have Mary. She is our partner manager. Um, the, I see you're raising her hands. Um, just watch your chat. Mary's going to reach out to you and we will ship that directly to you. I will warn you, it is a 40 pound box that will be delivered right to your door. So make sure you're prepared before you lift that up and, and put that in your, your garage or your house. So congratulations. All right. So we are, oops, we don't need to do thank you yet. So we're going to go into some Q and A time. Um, if you guys, again, have any chat uh, questions that you want to ask Emily or our panelist, I'm going to uh, kick off with, with the first one here. And I think it's um, just something that I'm, I'm still amazed about. Emily, just the, the results that you got from at least your first launch, the, the tripling checkouts, 139% growth is just astounding. Um, was that one of the goals that you had going into this where you said, you know, we, we really need massive growth and we're going to, you know, migrate all the, all the, uh, the brands to Shopify or was this just kind of a bonus um, from all the implementations that you did? Yeah, well, I think we saw in 2020 how much uh, e-commerce was growing and booming and how much consumers were really leaning into it. Um, so I think we just wanted to capitalize on that momentum. Uh, but I think the part that was really unexpected was that we were able to transform our digital marketing effort because we actually had a platform that worked for us. Um, so for the first time we were able to, you know, email market and run sales and promos. Um, and that was really surprising and exciting to see the results that came with that. Excellent. Really excited about that. And then is that something that, um, you know, Ryan and, and Emily, you guys mentioned as part of the, the post support, just continuing to working on optimizations for the website um, to consider to con continue your marketing growth? Is that included as part of that or is it mostly development? Uh, how does your support agreement typically look? Yeah, so one good thing about our support agreement is, and if people who are listening have multiple brands in their network. Um, one good thing about our support agreement with CQL is that it can be broken out really simply for budgeting purposes um, between each brand. Um, but yeah, we still utilize CQL and it's nice to have, um, if I don't know everything, if I don't know all the answers, it's really nice to be able to lean on a team of experts who can help me out and guide me down the right path um, and just always having them there uh, is such a reassurance. Excellent, Ryan. Yeah, I, I would just say, yeah, it just it varies on the month, right, Emily? I mean, there there might be a month or you know a stint where there's, you know, a quarter of the budget is going towards SEO and the quarter is development, and then we've got some some UX and design enhancements or, or growth strategy, and there might be another month where it's fifty percent development because we're adding a new feature and and um, 
pulling back on SEO, let's say. So, so it's, it's definitely flexible in how we work and just depending on what, what the client needs to, to grow their business and, and what the brands, you know, in this case, 11 brands have a lot of competing priorities as well. And so, so rely heavily on the client to help, to help measure what's going to be most impactful and what should be prioritized, but uh, definitely able to, to be flexible there. Excellent. Okay, so uh, a fun one here, um, partners. Uh, we have a question, were there any specific partners that Escalade recommends based on your support and integration with Shopify Plus? And uh, this would be a great one, I think, for everybody to chime in on uh, top partners with Shopify. I know there's a lot of apps to choose from. A lot of people have great integrations with Shopify. Emily, I'll have you kind of kick this one off. Sure. Yeah. One of our big ones, Ryan touched on it earlier uh, with Salsify. It's uh, our product information management system handling all of that data. It really allows us to publish seamlessly um, product data from Salsify to Shopify. Uh, that was absolutely huge for us. Uh, we also rely a lot on Klaviyo for our email marketing. Uh, we had switched previously from active campaign um, and we are really loving Clavio so far, and um, we're using Bizarre Voice for reviews, um, and that has integrated well. All right, from our Shopify team, do you guys have any that are just big ones? I know um, I, there's there's a bunch that I can name off the top of my list, uh, off top of my head. Is there are there some that just people come and say we're just we're so excited that it already integrates? Some that have just worked really well uh, migrating to from an app perspective. I think Anthony and I would would bore you with the amount of you know, apps that we could spill. <laughs> but I, I, you know, Ryan brought the name up Gorgeous earlier. Uh, big fan of the Gorgeous team. Uh, they do a fantastic job. So um, if I would name drop one, I would I would reiterate them. Yeah, I like Gorgeous. Um, they're fantastic, and they work super closely with us. I also like. Uh, oh yeah, there's a lot. Um, I, Loop Loop has been great, great to work with. Um, loop returns there's a there's a ton depending on the area that you want to go in and what you want to expand you know recharge is obviously huge and you know there could be a, a potential there but uh yeah there's a lot <laughs> there's yeah we've talked clavio gorgeous recharge Yato, yeah these, search yeah. spring lots of lots of really good ones um all right we've got another question that came up uh, this one might be um kind of a team question here it says we're hearing rumors that Shopify markets may be adding functionality to support multi-store brand. Um, the question of Escalade would be moving to Shopify market or stick with the current setup. Yeah, if I, I can start with that one, if, if you guys sure. would like, um, you know, Emily, I guess we haven't really talked international for for your sites really like roadmap wise, but um if you guys were to say tomorrow that you wanted to expand internationally for for brand markets would be what we would use for that um because it would allow you to leverage it um without it doing expansion stores so let's just take the onyx brand you have us us you know it's dot com english usd today if you guys wanted to add canada onto that we could leverage that same base store and then leverage uh, the markets um, to add, say, a Canada-based instance, and that would be a single-store instance. But you could have Canada experience uh, with a, you know, a USD.com uh, experience. Um, I think the the multi-site approach that you guys have today, just so that it's, it's clear for for the uh, Kyle, I think Kyle is the one that asked the question, and just everyone here is like the the multi-store instance is set up this way because each brand is completely independent and so they all have their own stores with catalogs that are managed that way um if if any one of those wants to go international markets can be turned on um, on any individual store so if escalade sports and onyx and lifeline want to go international each one of those can have markets turned on and they can configure you know if if Escalade wants to go UK and Canada, but Lifeline's just going to go, you know, let's say AU in Canada, they can all be configured independently on a per brand basis. Um, so it's it's flexible in that way. When you say turn on, Ryan, is that like it's it's like this is new to me? Is this an app that you would turn on in the in the No, app it's just or? a native. It's just a core core functionality. Um, so there's kind of two international approaches you can take on Shopify. The, the past approach was expansion stores. So if you're a plus merchant, you receive, I always forget the number, I think it's nine expansion stores um, where 
you know, they would be different instances in that multi-site, but they're all for the same brand. So it's like you'd have Onyx CA, Onyx AU, and Onyx, you know, .com US, but with markets, it actually simplifies that. You just have Onyx in that single store and through configuration and the admin of that one store, you can determine, you can create your, your CA and your AUs um, right from that one instance. So it creates some efficiency there. Um, and I know there's a, there's a roadmap of features. It's a, it's, it's a fairly, I don't know, it's been out for, Shopify, you'll have to correct me on this. I think it's been out for six, eight months at this point. Um, it was like end of Unite last year. So maybe we're coming up on a year that that's been out now. Um, and I know you guys have a roadmap for that product as well. So that's kind of the future of simplifying international expansion on Shopify is, is my understanding of, of, of that and where I've seen kind of your roadmap go with that, that product. Yeah, Absolutely. right. And and just to confirm that the third option would be going the third party route, obviously, through like a Zonos or Globally uh, markets in its current form is uh, cross border. It, yeah, it's it, it, the, the functionality that that Kyle that you're referencing in the chat there uh, is coming, I believe, end of this year. That's already been announced. It's on the roadmap. Um, and the intention is to get more competitive, not competitive per se, but to have the functionality merchants need to be effective cross cross border sellers essentially so um when it comes to multi-store I, I believe the also the intention is to go multi-country payout wise obviously different bank accounts for different stores in different countries is a thing for a lot of our merchants so that's a functionality that is on the roadmap as well um stay tuned with that because i know i know that is coming uh, relatively soon Excellent. Well, Ryan, great job on explaining markets also versus expansion. That was, uh, that was a great job. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. It's great. Yeah, it was, it was perfect. <laughs> so I guess my question, does it translate all these different sites for you? Is there like a translation piece of that so it can put it into French or Spanish? That's a good question. I know it is currency converting. Um, I believe that's also on the roadmap. Yeah. Roadmap. Okay. Yeah, right. It, it supports it supports the conversion, but Shopify doesn't actually do the language conversion for you. Okay. Yeah, and there's multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's multiple ways to to do that. It also depends on which if you're using markets or you're using expansion stores. Excellent. All right, so we are actually running out of time today, so I just want to thank everyone uh, for today's uh, joining today's webinar. A special thanks, uh, Emily, for sharing your firsthand experience uh, with Escalade and, and what it was like migrating to Shopify. Um, and to Ryan, Keaton, and Anthony, thank you guys uh, for taking time for the engaging discussion. Um, just so everyone knows, uh, we will be emailing today's webinar recording out, uh, so you're free to pass that along, watch it again, um, as well as we'll send out the case study for Escalade Sports from Shopify as well as one from CQL. Uh, we invite you to visit our website. I've put a couple links there in the chat and we will follow up with you on email. We also invite you to follow us on LinkedIn where we share all of our client news and really anything that's relevant to the platforms that we work with. So thank you again for joining us today. And again, thank you for their panelists for sharing their time. Thanks, thank you everybody. so much. Guys.